What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Keo Carnage here, and dropping you guys another commentary today. And the gameplay you're checking out is another gameplay of me messing around on my monitor. I got a bunch of gameplay. I bought a monitor on Saturday, but yeah, that's not the point of this commentary. But today's commentary, I know in the past couple commentaries, you guys, uh, you know, you heard about what I have to say about the Xbox One and yada yada yada. And today I'm going to play Devil's Advocate for you guys. And I know you guys are going to probably shit on me for this one. Or, you know, just take a huge dump on me. But, say for instance we still have the DRM. Say for instance we still had it. What, 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 what are we looking at necessarily as far as the future of gaming? So a lot of my friends are PC gamers, right? And a lot of you guys out there do play on Steam. My little cousins, they play on Steam. They play PC games, they play Minecraft, they play, you know, uh, Trouble in Terrorist Town, uh, uh, Counter-Strike, etc., etc., and it's all, you know, PC and launched off Steam. And what I don't understand about people that play, you know, uh, again, I can understand what why people are up and rise about the longevity of games and so forth and all that, and the whole 24 hour check I understand why you're upset about that I understand why it's there but there is a reason why Microsoft was uh, pretty much enforcing this DRM and their direction what plausibly could have been the future of the Xbox One and what they were aiming at was to make the Xbox One kinda like a Steam-esque ed uh, engine within itself what happens is is that with the DRM it's almost like buying a PC game and using you know the code on the on the on the package on the packaging or on the you know low paper disc case that you get with the game when you buy a PC game or you know et cetera et cetera and that code is attached to your account it's attached to your computer it's attached to you know your name who you are and yeah, that's, pr that's, that's pretty much the same way with PC games. Like Steam, you go on Steam and you buy games and it's attached to your Steam account. It's attached to that account. You can re-download it whenever you want. You can do whatever. You can, you know, fondle it for years and go back to it. The point is, is that what where Microsoft was going with it was that they don't want to kill the used game system, but they still want to sell games. Even with Steam, Steam had sales all the fucking time. Steam had sales a lot. They had tons of sales, like like weekly, daily, you know, sweet deals and all that. Like they had their, you know, they always do a summer sale and all that. And where I'm getting at is that virtually what what the Xbox One would lead to down the road is an all digital uh, medium in the console version. You know, like we had, you know, with Steam for the PC, and then soon we would have had uh, the Xbox One for, you know, console gaming. And it, yes, it does kill the secondary market, but the issue that people are not, you know, the thing that people are not seeing is that uh, we're we're, we're going to be in the digital age soon. We everything's going to be digital. No one, let's be honest, barely anyone buys CDs and DVDs anymore. Uh, I have an iPhone. I buy all my music off off iTunes, off, off the app. I buy all my apps off the app. I buy it's like I have movies through Netflix. I don't go out and rent movies. Everything is going to be at our disposal through the internet, and that's how it's going to be, and that's how it, it it's going to be. And the the problem that people saw with the with the DRM and you know the connect not being able to work, and I I am guilty of. You know, I'm guilty of making these, you know, false pretenses because there was actually one thing about the DRM that I hated was it was the 24-hour online check. That's a whole other story, but we'll just go into it. The problem is, is that when people look at these things and look at changes, they don't necessarily, you know, accept it for what it is. They and they don't see what kind of direction that it was. And again, that's on Microsoft's fault part. Or not really sharing their vision or sharing why or where their direction is going, especially with the DRM. They kind of just kind of slapped us with the, uh, well, you can't do this and that and can't do this and that. It's kind of like your dad telling you, like, hey, son, don't take a shit in the front yard. 
and you ask him why, he doesn't tell you why. You know, obviously, you're taking a dump in the front yard, that's kind of not cool, but point is, is that, you know, a lot of you a lot of you guys were disappointed from Microsoft and looked up to them for the Xbox One to see what cool shit that they had coming. And they didn't really tell us the cool shit that they had coming. They kind of just like, hey, the internet kind of just wasn't like, hey, that's a DRM. What the fuck that's doing there? While they were sitting here like, oh, man, you're going to have uh, the family plan, the shared... Uh, file, you know, the shared library and all that, and all these great things that they were coming out with. And with the DRM being revoked, a lot of these programs are being revoked as we speak, or already has been revoked. So, when you think about it, like, you kind of just can't take, you know, one shitty, like, one shitty thing, or make make out something to be one shitty thing but instead you gotta like either improve on it or just take it away completely if it's that bad I don't think I personally think the DRM was bad but I didn't think it was that bad I believe that it was bad to the point that I, you could also improve on it uh, taking away a 24 hour uh, check was, was a big thing that needed to go definitely but the whole thing within itself uh, especially with you know uh, verification for, or you know you know, for ownership, that was fine. I was okay with it. I was like, PC players do this all the time. I own most of my games. I buy my games new. It doesn't really affect me. I don't really care. But the point is, is that the vision of Microsoft that they have, and you gotta look at the innovations that they had with the 360 throughout the years, and what they've added onto it, and how they changed it, and all the cool shit they done with it. I, I'm not really like the longevity of the 360. Is, is gonna or the Xbox one in this case is, is, like I'm hoping for better at things down the road and cooler things because Microsoft's always improving on on their software and their system and I'm not really that like mad I'm not like gonna sit here and be like oh I'm gonna go get a PS uh, PS4 because the shit box one is gonna do et cetera et cetera that's not how I feel I feel like when Sony puts out a product it's there it's done it's what it is for so many years but when you know Microsoft puts out a system, it's not the same shit every time. There's always something new going on every couple, every three months. There's always a new add-on. There's a new feature. There's room for innovation, and that's maybe the DRM was was in the direction of what innovation could have been and what it should be and what it can be. But I know what I'm saying is kind of a little bit unpopular. Again, there's always like a medium between things, guys, and there you gotta, that's why playing devil's advocate is very important. Is that when you you're able to learn both sides of it and be able to come to a medium in between both sides of things and actually come with a up with a better solution or a better idea or a better suggestion. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the commentary. Like always, leave a comment, rate, and subscribe. And I'm out, guys. You have a good day. Peace.